Welcome to today's uh, Perth and Kinross Licensing Board, uh, Thursday 22nd of uh, September. I apologise for the uh, late start uh, of today's meeting, uh, which was due to uh, the overrunning uh, committee previous to us. Um, but uh, hopefully we can uh, get on with the uh, business. Um, just want to uh, introduce the uh, members of the uh, licensing board. Uh, we have uh, Councillor James uh, joining us uh, virtually on the uh, big screen. Uh, from my right, we have uh, Councillor Anderson, uh, Councillor Stewart, uh, Councillor McPherson, uh, myself as convener, Councillor Barrett, uh, Deputy Clerk to the board, uh, Colin Elliott, uh, Councillor Ahern, Councillor Parrott, uh, and Vice Convener of the Board, uh, Councillor Williamson. Um, uh, we also have apologies uh, from uh, Councillor Brock. Uh, I'm not aware of any other uh, apologies. That's the full set, thank you. Um, are there any uh, declarations of interest? No. Um, I'd also uh, like to um, introduce uh, Deborah Gilkison, uh, Licensing Manager, uh, who's in the Chamber, uh, as well as uh, Donald McLeod, uh, the Gaelic Development uh, Officer, uh, and we have um, Shona uh, Douglas uh, as well. So, um, can I ask the members agree the minutes of the meeting of the 15th of August for uh, approval and signature? Thank you. Uh, the next item uh, on our agenda is item five, um, which is a report to the board on the uh, Royal uh, National Mod, um, and it starts on page 13 of your, your pack. Um, it's a report to the board on the possible uh, general extension of licence hours uh, for the Ro Royal National Mod. Uh, and can I ask Debbie Gilkison, licensing manager, to speak to the report, please? Debbie. The Royal National Mod is returning to Perth after an 18-year absence. The eight-day festival celebrates Gaelic language and culture and is held annually in a different Scottish town. The main event venues for physical performances and competitions will be held at Perth Concert Hall, Perth Theatre and the North Inch Campus. As well as the mod competition itself, the element itself, there is a mod fringe which event with events taking place late into the evening, which may consist of music, poetry reading, debates, etc., within licensed premises. Fringe events may continue beyond the Perth and Ross Council, like sorry, Perth and Canross Licensing Board's social demand or function hours, as set out in the board's licensing policy statement. We have had a request that licensed premises providing mod-related entertainment be granted extended hours until 2 a.m. from Friday the 14th of October to the early hours of Sunday morning 23rd of October. This would be limited to those premises within Perth City Centre. It is a matter for the Board to consider, consider where the Royal, whether the Royal National Mod with Mod Fringe is an event of local or national significance that justifies a general extension of licensed hours. Thank you. Um, thank you very much uh, for that, uh, Debbie. Can I ask uh, Donald McLeod uh, to say a few words about the mod and the mod fesh and how they relate to a general extension of hours? Donald, please. Thank you, convener. Um, the Thank you, Convener. Yes, uh, the Royal National Mod um, is of national significance to Gaelic language and culture, and it will draw visitors from across Scotland and from um, international visitors also to the city of Perth, and they will enjoy nine days of competition um, and of um, Gaelic language, Gaelic music, Gaelic culture, and they will participate in and enjoy our fringe programme, which ranges from musical events to lectures to things like um, the whiskey place names of Perth and Kinross, which hopefully will draw interest, and some um, local uh, food being celebrated by some of our, our businesses and partners, and will also engage as many of the businesses as possible in terms of the economic impact 
of the Royal National Mod to, to the City of Perth and to Perth and Kinross Council. Thanks very much for that, um, Donald. And apologies to, to, to members. I should have asked if there was any questions for uh, Debbie Gilkison, uh, but I'm sure they can both handle uh, questions if we just take them uh, in a one. Or does anybody have any any questions? Councillor Ahern. Thank you. Um, whilst I note, and I think it's it's probably right to having a general license to cover the city centre. What monitoring or control is going to be on those premises that aren't taking place? that may decide to just um, continue with the extended license. Those that apply for um, extended hours will have to evidence that they ha are having modulated entertainment. I understand that, but there may be because other premises that don't apply will see a lot of premises with events on and, and extended hours, some are more are, are likely to try and extend their hours or to um, get patrons in. I'm just wondering if there's going to be any control on that. I can I ask the deputy clerk to respond to that? Thank you, Convener. Of course, there's kind of going to be a slight unusual period where there's going to be overlap between uh, premises that doesn't normally happen, social demand functions and entertainment. Um, my answer to the question would be, of course, uh, that first of all, I'm aware of Mr. McLeod is um, liaising with a few premises that may want to go longer, so he will certainly be aware of those going longer. Um, those that do not are not meant to go longer would be breaching their premises licence if they did so. And of course, we have our LSO, but of course, we have the police as well. So it would be the normal enforcement mechanisms. Are you happy with that, Councillor Hearn? Thank you. Uh, are there a, any other questions? Sorry, Councillor Hearn. Thank you. Yeah, it's just in relation to paragraph 15, um, where it gives the um, area that's going to be considered, and it just states in there, um, Per City Centre is considered to be within the four ring roads of Caledonia Road, Athol Street, Tay Street and Marshall Place. Could I ask that it's to be within and to include those four roads, because you've got air premises on those actual roads as well. Yeah, I, I think we can do that. And the um, uh, the deputy clerk to the board, I think, was going to um, expand uh, or explain in greater detail what the uh, the, the boundaries would be, Councillor Iron. Uh, are there any other questions? Um, in which case, um, we are now ready to uh, come to a decision. Um, can I ask what member, what option do members uh, wish to take? Uh, and if I could start with uh, Councillor Anderson. Would, would that be option two, Councillor Anderson? Is that option two? Yeah. Yep. OK. Thank you. Councillor Stewart. I'd like to approve option two. Yep, I'll approve option two. Thanks, Councillor McPherson. Um, I concur with option two. Councillor Ahern? Uh, option two. Councillor Parrott? Yep, there we go. Yes, option two, I'm entirely satisfied that this is an event um, that justifies the extension um, contained in option two. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Councillor Parrott. Councillor Williamson. Option two for me, thank you. And if we can go to Councillor James. I don't suffer so the same uh, IT problems as uh, you. Um, option two for me, thanks, Convener. Um, thanks very much, Councillor James. I wouldn't tempt fate if I was attending the meeting remotely. So um, can I ask the deputy clerk if there's anything to add? Uh, 
Uh, thank you. I think this would need to, be minuted, need to be minuted in a particular way in response to what Councillor Hearn said earlier on. I think the phraseology would be within and immediately adjacent to the four ring roads. So that will take account of those immediately on the other side of those roads. So there are one or two. So if I read out what I think would be the minuted decision, I agree that the mod with the mod fish is a special event of local and national significance, such that during the period of Friday the 14th of October 2022, to Saturday 22nd October 2022, social demand licence hours are extended to 2am provided mod, fringe or fish related entertainment is taking place in the particular licensed premise. This applies only to those licensed premises within Perth City Centre, namely those, I mean, those premises within and immediately adjacent to the four ring roads of Caledonian Road, Athol Street, Tay Street and Marshall Place. For the avoidance of doubt, reference to Friday 14th October to Saturday 22nd October until 2 a.m. refers to the early hours of the following days, the following mornings, i.e. into Saturday 15th October at 2 a.m. until into Sunday 23rd October 2022 at 2 a.m. Any premises wishing to operate these extended hours will require to have a trained first aider on the premises from 1 a.m. until close each night, uh, as members will be aware from the report. Thank you, Camina. Um, thank you very much uh, for that, uh, Mr. Elliot. Okay. Um, item six one uh, on our agenda, uh, and if you need to leave, then that's fine. Thanks, uh, Donald. Uh, is a major variation application for a news agent at 33 uh, Garth Avenue. Uh, we have uh, Janet Hood's solicitor uh, representing her client, uh, Mr. Canagassingham. Uh, uh, here today. Um, unfortunately, uh, Mr. Canagassingham uh, wasn't able to um, uh, be here due to the late start of the meeting. Um, so we apologise um, for that. Uh, as I say, this is a major uh, variation application uh, for the news agent at 33 Garth Avenue, Perth. Uh, and can I ask the uh, Deputy uh, Clerk to introduce the application? <laughs> Thank you, Convener. Uh, this application, the members may be aware, was deferred as the premises license holder had a flight cancelled on him and was unable to return home and participate in the previous board meeting. Uh, as kind of Convener has indicated, we have Janet Hood as agent attending uh, in the premises, of course, in person. Uh, we, as you know, you have two objectors, Susan Monroe and Robert Wallace. Susan Monroe has decided to rest on her objection. It's just the objection letter, nothing more. Robert Wallace has been written to regarding today's hearing. No response has been received and therefore it's taken. He also just rests on the objection only. Uh, neither objector will therefore be participating in today's hearing. The premises licence was transferred to the current licence holder on 25th January 2022. The proposed variation seeks to firstly change the name of the premises and secondly increase the off-sales display area. The current off-sales capacity is 8 metres squared. The variation seeks to amend off-sales capacity to 2.268 metres squared. This appears to be a decrease. However, the current figure of 8 metres squared was incorrectly calculated. The current display area is of three shelves of 1.8 metres in length behind the counter. The variation represents, therefore, an increase in the off-sales alcohol display area. Members have a copy of the proposed location layout plan for your information, uh, and it should be noted that both the location element and the layout element are on the one plan. As you know, two objections received from Robert Wallace and Susan Monroe. Where an objector does not appear, it's a matter for the board what weight to give to the objection in the absence of being able to question the objector. I have nothing more to add, Convener. Um, thanks very much for that, uh, Mr. Uh, Elliot. Can I ask uh, Janet Hood, a uh, solicitor, to speak to the application? Janet. <laughs> Am I on? Sorry. Oh, green light. Ah, thank you. Is that, that's better. Um, I hope. Thank you. Uh, I don't usually need a microphone. That we're hearing me in Wick. Um, my client, uh, Kamala Seelan Kanaga Singham, is, um, has taken over the premises in January. He's experienced in the licensed trade, having had shops in Fife and Linlithgow in the past. The current display is, as Colin said, it's 0 0.84 square metres, which is basically was lying to the um, inside end of the 
counter and it, he, my client has asked to increase the off sale area very modestly to 2.268 square metres. You'll see on the plan that everything, um, everywhere the alcohol is going to be uh, displayed is clearly within the visibility of the till and the staff who will be working there. This always adds a, a good element of safety. May I ask that we accept that you accept that the change of name to Garth News Agents is acceptable at this point? I just say that's something that was requested on its own would just go through um, without coming to the board. So I don't think there's any issue no, with that. Thank you. I just thought I'd better make sure. Um, now we come to the objections. Uh, the objections are from lay members. Um, a lot of it is not necessarily relating to the five objectives of the Licensing Scotland Act, but because I think it is only courteous to allow lay people to have a, a, a hearing before you, or at least a reading before you, I intend to deal with them as, um, as if everything is completely okay in terms of licensing. Mrs Munro has said that uh, she lives above the commercial property and there isn't usually a problem, but she's stating that since the takeover of the news agents, there's been a lot more litter around the flats. The bins are being used by non-occupants. There's a lack of parking and access. Um, now, I went to the site yesterday at three o'clock because I know that your honours expect me to do a proper job. And um, there was virtually no litter anywhere around the shop or in the bit Immediately behind the shop, there is a large car park. I checked all around there. I walked up to the playing fields. I walked up the path that runs between the playing fields and the housing. Then I came down and I walked down. The further away you got from the shop, there was more litter, but I couldn't see any litter that was necessarily linking directly to the shop. Although, of course, it might have been, but there were McDonald's packets and sundry other bits and pieces there. There was no evidence that I could see that the shop was uh, deliberate um, any cause of litter dropping in the area. There were Tesco's packages there. It's the nature, unfortunately, of people, um, which I think is quite shaming, that they drop litter um, all over Scotland. The, this is not actually a matter for the licensing board, neither is the lack of parking. Because I was there at three o'clock and I stayed till 4.30, I wanted to see what the effect people coming out of school would have, because people quite often, school children might go to the shop, parents might pick them up there, etc. While I was there, there were three shops, uh, sorry, three cars in the back of the shop, two of which left, and one in the front of the shop. So there was plenty of parking on the street because I drove round to see if I could park with a certain amount of ease, and there was plenty of parking on the street. Again, this is not a matter for the licensing board. Mrs Munro states that she thinks um, there could be more issues living around the shop, but the premises are already, were already licensed and um, they uh, don't appear to have caused her any particular issues. She mentions something about notification. That's not within the power of my client. That is something that occurs with the licensing board. There are strict rules on that, four metres from any particular premises, which might show why um, perhaps further away people didn't get notification. Mrs Munro refers to previous complaints about which I know absolutely nothing and nor does my client because he wasn't there to receive these complaints. So I don't know what the same issues are. Basically, uh, I do think that this whole objection is actually irrelevant to the matter before you because the matters brought up within this application do not relate to the five objectives and um, are not able to be dealt with by licensing boards. The second objection is from Mr Robert Wallace, who lives just along the road uh, and above the premises. Um, he's writing to give his objection to any extension of the licence. Sales of the property um, at 33 Garth Avenue. Now, since I'm not really sure, since the last sales of alcohol stopped, well, I don't know when they stopped. Um, my understanding is that this license has moved straight through and uh, alcohol has always been able to be sold there. This is a variation of license, not a new license. That, that it goes on to say, this has become, when it was stopped, one of the best areas of Lethen, and now um, it's become worse. Now, 
I can't see any reason for this being said. I went into the shop. It's been recently refurbished to the extent that it's been properly uh, dealt with. New fridges have been put in, not just alcohol fridges, but other ones. The shelving is immaculate. It's clean. It looks like the sort of shop you'd want to go into. So I don't honestly see what the issue would be with that. He's, Mr. Um, Wallace goes on to say that since Mr. Benson sold the shop, the new agents have taken over. The close has become a toilet again for people wanting to urinate and be sick and smoke their drugs. Now, my client has nothing to do with anybody being sick. If this indeed occurs, go to the toilet in the close or doing drugs. That is nothing to do with my client. I walked round the area to see if there was any evidence of this. If people are being sick and going to the toilet, there's a smell. You can also see sick. And there were no drug paraphernalia that I could spot within the area. Now, that's why you expect me to go to see where my clients are when complaints like this happen. And I always check because I think it's imperative that I can give you a truthful version. Again, he says, we don't want to go back to having stones thrown, cans thrown at windows, etc. constant trouble, vandalism. This implies that there's been constant trouble and vandalism under the previous owners. I don't know. It seems to be slightly unlikely. Perhaps there is a bad element in that area. What did strike me, though, is if the police thought that any of this trouble could be linked to my client's premises, we would have, and we would definitely have, as a comment from the police and probably an objection because they would be saying this client actually um, doesn't know what he's doing. But I submit to you that he's had no problems anywhere else and he appears to run, uh, well, very nice looking premises, that's for sure. Um, we go along on to page two and the Mr. Wallace suggests that people are running along a ledge and knocking on windows. Now, again, this can't have anything to do with my client. Uh, they're kicking down doors. Uh, I don't really see where this is coming. When the mention of broken bottles was made in cans, I walked around. I have seen one can of alcohol lying in the area. I took a, 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 a note of what it was. I went into the shop and it's not sold by my clients, but just one can. The area is, there's not much litter there, to be perfectly honest at all. Um, he then says, it's underage children are buying alcohol or the adults who bought it for them give it to them. Now, again, that's a very serious accusation. And I spoke to my client about this and I said, what happens when school kids, etc., come around? Do you have any evidence of or any no knowledge of children hanging around in front of the shop um, asking adults to get alcohol? He said, well, they check because I've been in the licensed trade for a long time. His staff are told to look out the door. And if he spotted something like that, one, he wouldn't sell to the agent's purchaser. But two, he would phone the police. And again, we don't seem to have any evidence that there have been any complaints made to the police about this matter at all. Now, I take this really quite seriously um, because it is imperative that alcohol is not sold to children. Now, I hope you check council records and warden records and police records to confirm these objections. This implies to me that there might have been a problem before. Now, the reason I went to the premises at the time I did, is it is, I believe, now I hope I'm right on this, but I believe that most schools children come out at about three o'clock and they're coming out, perhaps they might have after school activities and they'll be away by about 4.30. There were no children hanging about there. There were two children playing in the park with their mother and I didn't see any groups of children hanging about on opposite corners or anything like this. So I think this is either relates to activities that may or may not, and I have no evidence of that gone on before, but it certainly does not appear to relate to my client. I submit that my client is a sound licensee. He's been in the business for a long time. He has a beautifully clean and tidy shop. He makes a point of picking up litter, sweeping up cigarette butts, all the rest of it, and I move the grant. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Hood. Are there any questions for the for Mrs. Hood, Councillor Ahern? It's not a question at this point. It's a point of clarity. Um, on the issues of the application on page nineteen, it says about Susan Monroe, the objector, has decided to rest on her objection. 
and Robert Wallace objector has written regarding his participation. No response has been received. Therefore, he is taken. He is resting on his objection. To me, that means that the objection shouldn't be taken into account. But if we then go to bullet points eight and nine and say two objections have been received, they are from Robert Wallace and Susan Monroe. Where it does not appear, it's a matter for the board to give weight to the objection. But I, so I'm, I'm, I'm no. slightly. Yeah, it's maybe phraseology. Sorry. Um, thanks, Councillor Heron. And I'll just uh, ask the clerk, or deputy clerk, to the board to respond to your question. Thank you. Sorry, I stepped in too quickly. It's been a long day. Um, just to clarify that the first comments about resting on the rejection are uh, procedural. Uh, objections are received, and then under procedure, they are then asked whether how they wish to participate. That can include written representations, telephone, I'm standing by telephone today, uh, attending by video and now in person. Uh, now, uh, Susan Monroe chose not to um, submit anything further, written representation. So that's what I, what I mean by resting on the objection. There is nothing further. There is the objection. It remains live. It is for your consideration. It, of course, you have it in your papers. They've cho uh, Mr. Wall is slightly different and we didn't get a response from him. So I've taken it that he only has his objection because he's not here to say anything more to you. Uh, now, so essentially you have the two objection letters before you that Mrs. Hood's been addressing. Uh, taking it further forward, as a matter of law, um, you have two written letters in front of you, uh, but you're unable to ask questions. So therefore, you have to think in your mind, uh, and you, know, you have to decide what weight you're going to, it's not the same as not taking any account. You have to decide what weight you're going to, get to give to the objection in the absence of being able to ask questions. And that might be a lesser weight than you would normally give if they were present, able to ask question, uh, answer questions, if you understand where I'm coming from. Yeah, I think it was just my misunderstanding about the resting reading from that. It was she was deciding not to go ahead with her objection, but you've clarified that. OK, Okay. thanks for that um, clarification. Are there um, any other questions? Hey, Councillor Parrott. Thank you very much, convener. Can, can I just confirm that this business was taken on a, a, as a going concern from a previous business and that the premises were not, if you like, vacant for any length of time, um, while the license for those premises, if you like, remained extant. Um, I would have thought that if the premises were empty, then the license would have, um, you know, be, been taken back. Uh, if, if, if that question can be answered and that point of clarification made, thank you. My understanding is that this was a straightforward transfer of a going concern. Thank you for that. Are there any other questions? Councillor Paddock. That, 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 that is, that's satisfied me in, in, in that it was a transfer of a going concern that there, there would be, there was therefore no period when the premises were empty, and it, a period in which, if you like, the license might be withdrawn. And, and the fact that this is a major variation suggests that it's just, it's ongoing. Thank you. Well, my understanding is that it was ongoing, apart from the period of time when my client would have been making the shop clean, tidy, putting in new shelving, etc. I don't believe that alcohol or anything would have been sold then because it would have been a danger to the public. That's my understanding of the situation. Thank you um, for that. Councillor James, do you have any questions you wish to ask? No. OK. Um, no, Mrs Hood always puts it across uh, nicely. Thanks, convener. Thank you, Councillor James. Uh, Mrs Hood, would uh, you like to sum up? Um, I would hope, Your Honours, that you would see that this is a reasonable application. The alcohol on sale uh, certainly looks at a reasonable level. It's not the cheapest end of the market. The shop is clean and tidy. The outside is clean and tidy. I saw no signs of any likelihood of agency purchase on the sole day that I was there, and I moved the grant. Um, thank you uh, for that. Um, I think we're uh, now ready to come to a decision. Uh, can I ask, do members uh, wish to retire to consider this application? Um, if I could uh, start with uh, Councillor Williamson. Are we there? Um, no, I'm sorry, I don't want to retire. <laughs> sorry. Um, 
I, I don't see any any desire to uh, uh, re retire. Um, um, so, do we agree to vary the name of the premises? Vary, yeah, vary the operating plan, and amend the location uh, layout plan as sought. Agreed. Okay. Um, what about local conditions? I, I would like to request that we um, request that the licensing officer attends the premises at some point. So you'd like the licensing officer to attend the premises um, at some point in the future to carry out an inspection, is that correct, Councillor Williamson? Thank you. Uh, is there a seconder for that? Okay. Okay. Okay, if the deputy clerk can clarify. Yes, just for clarification, I think um, obviously it's uh, been one of those days. I want to be quite clear what Councillor Wilson and Councillor Ahern are proposing, because I did hear that you're suggesting local conditions, but you didn't say what local conditions. I just want to be clear. Um, is there particular local conditions that you're suggesting? Uh, what I did hear, of course, is that you are requesting a uh, the your the licensing standards officer to visit the premises to carry out an inspection, perhaps in light of the objection received. Obviously, just a request that would be that would be it. So, could you clarify about the local local conditions, please? Mm -hmm. Can I throw this through the window? Um, is this the written policy should be in place for the premises and immediate? Um, and, and immediate external areas shall be implemented by the premises license holder and all staff involved in the sale and consumption of alcohol and all to the continuing satisfaction of the board for dispersal of patrons and secondly litter and waste management. Uh, no, I think we've 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 concluded that section, um, uh, Mrs. Hood. So I think we're just about to to, to vote on on that local condition. Um, Councillor Anderson. Oh, right. At the pre-meeting, as such, that the local licensing officer would inspect the premises anyway and does it very well. No, it was putting a time scale on it. Are you moving granting without the local condition? Right. Do you? Is there a seconder for that motion? No. Councillor Parrott. I'm beginning to get a little confused as, well, as to where we are. Um, I, I, I would second a motion that does not impose local condition one as stated, um, but I have no objection to the um, licensing standards officer paying a visit as I think that's part of her normal duties. Thanks. Okay, um, I think we'll take the opportunity to retire and consider this further and then come back. Are we agreed?
Can you tell us when we're back live, please, Shona? Yeah, you're, I think you're still controlling my screen. But he's in the meeting. Councillor James, can you confirm you're in the meeting? Yes, please. You're, you're in, but muted, Councillor James. So. Sorry. Sorry. I'm having a day of it today. Sorry. Are, are we back live? Okay. I think we are now ready to come to a decision. Um, we have a motion um, proposed by Councillor Williamson um, that written policy shall be in place for the premises um, and immediate external area uh, and shall be implemented by the premises license holder and all staff involved in the sale and consumption of alcohol, uh, all to the continuing satisfaction of the board for dispersal of patrons uh, and litter and waste management uh, and a further request that the licensing standards officer uh, visits the premises to carry out an inspection in the light of the objections received. Um, we have uh, an amendment uh, from uh, Councillor Parrott um, that only the licensing standards officer visit the premises to carry out the inspection uh, but with no uh, other local uh, conditions. Do we have a seconder for uh, Councillor Parrott's amendment? I'd like to second Councillor Parrott's amendment. Thank you uh, very much for that. So that's seconded by uh, Councillor Stewart. Uh, and we'll uh, now move to the, the vote. And please indicate whether you're uh, supporting the motion uh, or the amendment. Uh, and I'll get uh, the clerk to the board to conduct that. Uh, thank you, Convener. I'll go down the line uh, in terms of uh, Councillor Williamson. Uh, motion. Councillor Ahern. Sorry, Councillor Parrott. Amendment. Councillor Ahern. Motion. Convener. Motion. Amendment. McPherson. Councillor Stewart. Amendment. Councillor Anderson. Amendment. Councillor James. Amendment. By my tally, that is three for the motion, five for the amendment. So, therefore, the major variation is granted with no local conditions added and simply a request that the LSO visits. Thank you, Convener. Thank you um, very much for that. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Hood. Uh, Thank you for that. Is there anything that you want to add, Deputy Clark? Nothing, that's all clear. Okay. Uh, item 6.2 on our agenda is a, a major variation application for uh, Pitlochry Festival Theatre, which is on page uh, 27 onwards in your pack. Uh, do we have uh, Mr. Michael Ives, Operations Manager? Uh, could we bring him into the meeting, please? Mr. Ives, could you indicate if you're able in the meeting? Yes, good afternoon. Okay, uh, Mr. Ives, I'll just uh, introduce the uh, the board to you. Um, from my left, we, or sorry, from my right, in fact, uh, we have Councillor Anderson, uh, Councillor Stewart, Councillor uh, McPherson, uh, myself, Councillor Barrett, convener of the board, uh, the deputy clerk to the board, uh, Colin Elliott, uh, Councillor Ahern, Councillor Parrott uh, and the Vice Convener, uh, Councillor Williamson. Uh, and joining remotely as well, we have uh, Councillor uh, Ian James. So, um, Afternoon, everybody. Nice to e meet you. OK, thank you. Um, so this is a major uh, variation application for Pitlochery uh, Festival Theatre, uh, Portna Creek uh, Pitlochery. Uh, yeah. And can I ask the Deputy Clerk to introduce the application? 
Thank you, Convener. If members bear with me, this was a um, uh, long gestation for this particular radiation application. The existing premises license covers the theatre building and a small outdoor area immediately at the front entrance, which is the car park side of the theatre. The proposed variation seeks to update and significantly extend the existing premises license. The principal variations sought are firstly amend the terminal on sales hour to midnight, uh, seven days per week. Secondly, reflect that the theatre building has been extended at the front entrance, which is the car park side of the building. Thirdly, delineate and extend the existing outdoor area at the front entrance, again the car park side of the building. Fourthly, add a new outdoor area to the, prem to the premises license on the River Tummel side down to Port Craig Road, which includes the bandstand and a kiosk. Fifthly, add another new outdoor area to the premises license, the extensive Explorer's Garden, which includes an amphitheatre. Uh, members have asked you to note that the David Douglas Pavilion within the Explorer's Garden is not to be licensed at this time. Now, the increase in capacity reflects the addition of the outdoor areas. Uh, this application was delayed and being brought to the board due to comments received from Planning and Building Standards. It emerged that planning permission was required for the bandstand located on the front lawn general area. Permission was granted on 7th of August this year for a temporary period up to 31st August 2025. And for members' information, the relevant condition on the planning permission is that third, uh, condition, planning condition three, no theatre-led performances of any kind shall take place on the bandstand and the use of the bandstand shall be limited to visitors usage only. The use of microphones, noise amplifiers or any other ele electronic modification equipment is not permitted on the bandstand or on the decking area immediately uh, sorry, surrounding the bandstand. Now members, this affects the variation request where in 5F, proposed 5F of the operating plan, at the moment it seeks to add, when referring to the front lawn area, it seeks to add performances and events in the front lawn outdoor area may take place on but are not limited to the bandstand. My view is this should be amended in light of the planning permission for the bandstand and it could be amended to performances and events in the front lawn area will not take place on the bandstand and immediate decking area, which is the complete opposite. Uh, and I know contact has been made with Mr Ives and I understand that has been agreed for that particular amendment. Planning do not object to the application. Building standards have advised that a completion certificate was not in place for the extension to the main building, or part of it at least. Uh, it's been progressing. There is a partial temporary occupation certificate in place. Building standards do not object, and any outstanding issues will be dealt with by them. Now, members, as you'll know from your papers, you have a, the proposed location plan, which shows all the outdoor areas before you. Layout plan for the ground floor and adjacent external areas, which shows two of the outdoor areas in more detail. Then you have the basement plan uh, for the theatre itself, the ground floor plan and the first floor plan. Lastly, convener, no objections have been received to the application. I've nothing more to add. Thank you uh, very much for uh, that, Mr uh, Elliot. Um, can I, I now ask uh, Mr Ives to speak to the application? Yes, so, so the um, application, the major variation was done because due to COVID, we were forced to um, move outdoors. We wanted to keep theatre going. We were forced to move outdoors. Um, and during the summer of 2021, we applied for a number of uh, temporary licences um, to be able to sell food and drink um, to people on the bandstand and up in the garden. Um, and we have decided as a company to progress that, to use these performance spaces going forward. Hence the application. Um, and we wanted to include the new uh, first phase of Vision 2021 um, of the refurbishment and upgrade of the theatre. Um, hence the major application. Um, in its, in its basic form, what we're trying to do is just create the flexibility to be able to take an offering to our guests throughout our campus. Um, and we would like to do be compliant while doing that. Thank you very much for that, Mr. Ives. Uh, are there any questions for Mr. Ives? Councillor Parrott, are you? No. no. Um, in, in which case, uh, Mr. Ives, is there anything further that you'd, you'd, you'd like to say? Thank you very much for your time today.
Thank you. Um, I think we're uh, now ready to come to a decision. Do we agree to vary the description of the premises, uh, vary the operating plan uh, and amend the uh, location and layout plans as sought? Uh, Councillor Williamson. Uh, yes. Sorry. Sorry, members, obviously, usual audio problems or uh, occasional audio problems. So, Councillor Robinson was in agreement to granting the major variation as outlined. Councillor Parrott? Agreed. Yes. Councillor Hearn? Agreed. Yes. Convener? Agreed. Yes. Councillor McPherson? Agreed. Yes. Councillor Stewart? Agreed. Yes. Councillor Anderson? Agreed. And Councillor James? Agreed. Okay. That therefore means the variation is granted as sought. Do, can you ask if there's any um, local conditions? Uh, sorry, yes. Uh, just to clarify, members, and I'm quite content to kind of look around here rather than go through individually. Uh, there was no suggestion of any additional local conditions. Just want to be clear. Are you wanting any local conditions added? No, no. Councillor James, you're not, uh, not nodding your head, you're shaking your head. So therefore no local Nothing. conditions added either. Thank you very much for that. Is there anything else you want to add, Colin? No, that's all clear. No. Um, thank you very much, Mr uh, Ives. Uh, and that now uh, brings today's proceedings to an end. So thank you uh, for your participation today and for your, your patience with the delayed start. Thank you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Have a good afternoon. Take care. Thanks.